Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today we're gonna to be making this adorable pencil case. So it's basically back to school time. So I thought, you know what? Why not make a cute pencil case? This is super beginner friendly too. So if you're a new sewer, this is a perfect starting project. And of course it's adorable. Look at this cute pouch. This fabric is from Stacy Itsu and there's the front and then here is the back. It's absolutely adorable. And of course it is lined with some super cute fabric as well. I do still have a broken elbow, but I can sew. I just need help cutting out the pieces. So I had my daughters help me cut out some of those pieces. So I think we're ready to go. Let's head over and see everything we're gonna need to make this fun project. So for your backing fabric, you'll need a piece that's five by nine and a half. For your front, you'll need a piece that's four and a half by nine and a half. And then you're gonna need two pieces that are two inches by nine and a half. For your lining, you're gonna need one piece that is six and a half by nine and a half, one piece that is four and a half by nine and a half, and one piece that is two by nine and a half. And then for your foam, you're gonna need a six by nine, nine inch, sorry, a one by nine and a four by nine. And then you're gonna need a 12 inch or longer zipper. This one is just the one I have that matches. Um, so this one's way too long, but it just needs to be 12 inches or longer. Then of course you'll need some basic sewing supplies. So we've got our wonder clips, um, a rotary trimmer, and of course our ruler. And other than that, you just need a sewing machine and some thread. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna set our lining pieces aside for right now, and we're just gonna work with our outside pieces. And we're gonna take one of our accent pieces and our backing piece, sorry, I'm <laughs> grabbing the wrong ones here. We're gonna set those aside. We're gonna take our back piece and one of our accent pieces, and we're just going to sew that right sides together using a one quarter inch seam allowance. So here is our piece, and I just pressed it towards the darker fabric. It doesn't matter which way you press it on this. The next thing we're gonna do is add our fusible foam to the back of all of our outside pieces. And so you'll notice that the fusible foam is just slightly smaller than your piece, and you're gonna wanna just center that. And if you've never worked with fusible foam, one side is kind of rough, you'll feel, and the other side is soft and smooth. The rough side is the side with the fusible on it. So that side is gonna go down toward your fabric. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with these pieces. Again, putting the fusible down and just centering our piece. And the reason it's a little bit smaller is because it just makes it a little bit easier when you are uh, sewing your bag together. You don't have all that bulk from the fusible. And you're going to just press it about 10 seconds or so, just enough to get that uh, fused. Just follow the instructions on whatever you're using. You could also use regular quilt batting for this as well. I just like the fusible because it just stays in place and just gives it a little extra body. And then you know it's fused when it's stuck to your fabric. So not gonna go anywhere. This one's a little crooked, but that's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and set our backing piece to the side and we're just gonna work with our front pieces and our zipper. So right here, and we're gonna need some of our lining. So we're gonna go ahead and take our zipper, and for this one, we're going to place our zipper right side down onto this larger bottom panel. This panel should be four and a half by nine and a half, and your zipper head is, the side that your zipper head's on is the right side, so we're gonna put that right side down. And I like to have a longer zipper because that way the zipper head can kind of be over here out of my way and it, uh, I don't have to worry about it. If you have a shorter zipper, you might just have to slide it out of the way when you're sewing, but it's not a big deal. So we're gonna place that right side down and then we're gonna get our lining piece that is also four and a half by nine and a half. So we're just gonna lay that right side down on top, lining up all these raw edges. And now we're gonna grab some Wonder Clips and just clip that in place. And then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew right along this edge as close to my zipper teeth as possible, but of course you don't wanna sew on the teeth themselves. You're welcome to use a zipper foot if you want. I am gonna show you using it just on my Juki with no special foot, and I like to do that just in case you don't have a zipper foot to show you that it can work. And then we're going to take this and just press this back just like this. And so I just run my iron just right on the edge there. And then I'll also usually press it from the front as well. 
And then if you want, you can just take this over to the sewing machine and just top stitch right along here to secure it in place. I'm actually gonna add a little decorative ribbon to it. So I've got a ribbon piece that's longer than I need. This is a Lori Holt gingham ribbon. And this is actually a, a bias tape, so I'm just gonna make sure it stays flat there. And I'm just gonna sew that right along this edge. And I think it's gonna go cute with our little top fabric that we have right here. All right, isn't that cute? Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing with our top. So we need the top, the zipper, and again, our lining piece. So for this one, we're gonna lay this piece right side down on top of there. And I'm gonna go ahead and just pin it in place really quick because we still need to put our lining on, but I feel like it's easier to see what I'm doing if I already have this one clipped in place. Now we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna add the lining to it. And I want my lining to be going the same direction. And you just want to uh, line up these raw edges over here. Okay. All right, again, one quarter of an inch. Again, we're gonna just press that back and we'll press the lining up as well. Okay, now we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew right along this edge. Now the next thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take this over and just run a stitch right here to kind of close it and run a stitch right here to close it. So at this point we want to go ahead and pull our zipper in like that and then we can run a stitch just right here and right here. And that's just gonna keep our zipper in place so that uh, when we're adding our bag together, we don't have to worry about it coming apart on us. All right, so we've got that there. Now we can go ahead and trim off these pieces. Okay, now we've got our lining, our backing, and our front piece, and so now we're gonna sew them together, and we're gonna sew them right sides together and then flip them. So again, make sure that your zipper is out so that we can flip our pouch out through the zipper, but you don't want it so far that you're gonna be hitting it with your sewing machine. So we're gonna take the outside piece and place that right side down on top, and then we're gonna place our lining right side up. So you're gonna see the lining on both sides. Okay, so again, I've got my outside piece right side up, my backing piece right side down, and then my lining piece right side up. And I'm just going to go ahead and clip all of these layers together all the way around. Now because we want this inside to be potentially washable, we also don't want raw edges in here, I'm gonna run a zigzag stitch all the way around the inside edge of our bag. You could put a binding on it, um, but I don't like to do that on these smaller bags because it's just so bulky and it's just a pencil case, so I'm not too worried about the inside, but I am gonna zigzag stitch all the way around. So on my machine, my zigzag stitch is this 03 right here. I'm doing 3.6 width and 0.5 length. And I am going to make sure I have the right foot on my machine so I don't break a needle. And then I'm gonna try and sew around the edge. If you go a little bit further in, that's okay. Your pouch will just be slightly smaller. Another tip on this would be to use a denim needle because you're going through so uh, a lot of layers that can help out some machines just so you're not breaking a needle or it's not struggling to get through the layers. When you get to the corner, just leave your needle in the down position, raise your presser foot, turn your work, and keep on going. All right, so I have zigzag stitched all the way around the outside edge, and I just do my best to get it right as close to that edge as possible. If you have a serger, you could also uh, use a serger at this time as well, that would be great. So now we just need to turn it right side out and we're gonna be done. Of course, I like to give it one final press as well. Now, if you have one of these handy tools, this is from Modern American Vintage and it is a point turner. Uh, you can also use a chopstick. You can use, uh, some of the Hera markers have that point on the end as well. Clover makes a really cool one. Uh, I love these Modern American Vintage tools because not only are they functional, but they're also extremely pretty. All right, and here we go. So I'm just gonna give this a press 
and voila, we have our cute finished pencil bag. By the way, this doesn't just hold pencils, it can hold sewing supplies. It also fits crochet hooks, stitching supplies, and knitting supplies, making it the perfect pouch for just about everything. All right, guys, that is it. This project was so fast and easy. As you can see, it came together really quickly. Again, it's totally beginner friendly, and I like adding that little ribbon embellishment on the front. I think it gives it a little something extra, uh, but you definitely could skip that step if you wanted to. This pouch finishes at about six inches by nine inches. All the cutting instructions will be in the description box below the video, and I will have a written pattern if you prefer that as well. So just check below the video for all of that information. So here are our two cute little pouches. My daughter made this yellow and black one. I think it turned out really cute. She did all the sewing on this herself. She did this cute stripey lining, and then she added that fun white rickrack along the edge just to give it a little extra pop. So I think hers turned out really cute. And her seam allowance was a little bit more than mine, so you can kind of see the difference. Hers turned out at about five and a half by eight and a half. Mine was six by nine. So I tried to stick to my quarter inch seam allowance. She did more of a half inch seam allowance because that was easier for her. Both of them will hold pencils just fine, and I think they both turned out really cute. So that's gonna be it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe so I know to keep making those videos for you. You can also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming fun. Thanks for joining me today, and I will see you next time. By the way, this doesn't just hold pencils, it can hold, hold that. Hi everyone, back to, <laughs> we could add a little embellishment on that zipper too. Oh, I should've thought of that. If you're seeing this, add a little embellishment on that zipper pull. Super cute.